Reefers. Nice to meet everybody. My name is Lindsay. I'm sorry for the background noise. That's the water in the tanks at Coralust. We are here at Coralust today. It is Saturday, March 2nd. We just got our inspection approved, so we are ready to go, but we're really not. Trying to put in the uh, all the final details, moving up all the coral over here from the house to the store, all the beautiful fish and the plants and everything. So when you first come in, it's gonna be awesome. So we're just doing this for you guys, so hang tight. But today, I really wanted to do a video um, regarding the frozen food that we have here in the store for retail. I'm completely new to this whole world, this whole life of reefing, hobbying, and fragging, and corals, and fish, and lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. So I wanted to come in, do a quick video on this because this is like a whole, this whole thing is really a whole new world to me, like they said in Aladdin. So I'm gonna go through, try to figure out what the difference between brine shrimp and jumbo shrimp and blood worms and plankton and what all of it means. Who's eating it? What's eating it? What is it for? So stay tuned. So a while ago, I actually watched Liza use these frozen cubes up top. You'll see that with the brine shrimp. They're pretty easy to use. No touch cubes make quick feeding a breeze. Just get some of the aquarium water, put it in a cup, add the cube and swirl around. You'll see the material start to break apart. And once it's fully defrosted, just dump back into your tank and how many fish you have will determine how often you need to feed them. As you'll see, we have a variation of sizes. You notice these little cubes that I just mentioned. We do have bigger sizes towards the bottom of the freezer. Now, brine fish is the most used live fish food, high in nutrients and is ideal for breeding fish and for their newly hatched fry or for picky eaters. Apparently, it's very delicious. Spirulina brine fish is similar to the first package, but is recommended for boosting the immune system of your fish. Next is krill, which is larger than traditional brine shrimp. It's great for saltwater carnivores, yet also accepted by freshwater fish, but beware as it will foul the water if not eaten within a short period of time. This algae is perfect for the smaller marine herbivores. It is a unique combo of protein and extra algaes they require as a special treat. Now squid is naturally high in omega-3 fatty acids containing lots of vitamins and minerals with higher level of phosphorus for another healthy treat option. Now this mysis shrimp is originally harvested from Glacier Lake in Canada. This food includes linolenic acid, omega-3 fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids, and much, much more. Great treat for your fish. This brine shrimp is harvested at their nutritional peak, gut loaded with omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. This treat offers a natural source with natural algaes for most marine species. Now, mysis shrimp, excellent protein treat that is filled with natural algae, which can improve coloration and support immune system. Blood worms, one of the top food choices for breeding and makes a good supplement overall for tropical. Daphnia, known as the water flea. It's well suited for young fry because it's easily digestible due to its small size. Silver sides are next. For freshwater and marine carnivores, they naturally contain all the nutrition of live fish and are great treats for almost all large fish, but can be cut up for smaller guys. Now the next two are great for smallmouth fish and fry. We actually feed these to our baby axolotls. The cyclopod is this tiny freshwater crustacean that feeds on small fragments of plant and animal materials. Perfect for you newborn fish. Now most medium to large fish can easily consume this food, the jumbo mysis shrimp, containing natural fatty acids and algae. And last is the ocean plankton, not only great for whales, but an excellent supplement for medium to large freshwater fish and provide beta carotene, which enhances color in aquarium fish.
So frozen versus dry food? That's the question. This is like comparing fresh kale to frozen kale to freeze dried kale. Obviously the most nutritional value will come from fresh kale. The next option is frozen kale, which is still nutritional, but depending on how you serve them, will determine the quality. And last is freeze dried kale. The process of freeze drying leaves the food with very little nutritional value and it's mostly air, but it can be convenient when you're in a pinch. So we do have the dry food as an option. All right guys, I hope you found that really educational as it was for moi. Um, when I do get a tank one day, this is going to come in super handy. So I'm glad that I'm learning all this now because uh, I don't want to hurt any little fishies or any little plants or whatever the hell else I'm going to have in my tank. Um, but I know that I'm going to have Coralus help me set it up because I have no idea. But I hope to see you guys in the store soon. We will let everybody know when we are open officially and uh, look for me. Bye guys.